On today's episode of Identity, candidate attorney Tato Mashishi pops by for coffee. We visit Constitution Hill in Johannesburg to learn more about patriotism and active citizenry. What's Happening features the review of a healthy green smoothies app and an inspirational movie. And we play out with a song by Tiwe, I Am Woman. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Hello Zanzi viewers Thank you for tuning to Identity right here on your number one channel, SAPC One Mzansi for sure. I'm your host, Viwe Kuala. Kwe nyangez gotile yo kwe Identity. Sifumane imiyalezo e mangazayo kuba sibuye le kwe ngoko nezgendu ebe nezitanda nchenga babu kelibetu. Kwe veke gotile yo, sikale inkubo yetu kukunibonisa inkubo ez gotile yo. Kwa ya namisanje, sikubeka nga lo njela. Chongani njele ngoko ebe ndinayo no tato mashishi. The young man joining me this morning is an advocate for youth leadership and empowerment. Tato Mashishi holds a Bachelor of Law degree from the Northwest University. He's also a member of the Golden Key International Honor Society, an invitation-only society that honors the academic achievements of college and university students in all fields of study. Between 2014 and 2015, he had the privilege of presenting talks on various legal subjects for the Northwest Provincial Government's Department of Social Development. Currently, he's a candidate attorney at a local branch of a leading international business and litigation firm. This is just a glimpse into his CV and is here to shed more light into his life and achievements. Tato, welcome to Identity. Um, thanks for having me and how are you this uh, morning? Um, I'm well, thank you. thank you. Thank you for asking. But let's get straight into mm -hmm. it. So what was your upbringing like? Okay, let me just put it into context. I define myself as Hwanago Kasi. You know, I was born in a township called Mutibistat, that is in Guruman in the Northern Cape. And I was raised in another township, but in Sushanguve, that is in Twani. So yeah, I define myself as Mfanago Kasi, just has, who just has um, ambition in life and mm -hmm. is driven with um, the intention of making a difference in the world. Yeah. Okay, so Mfanago Kasi, Chado, how was spirituality introduced in your life and what significance does it have in your life? right now. Yeah, although some may argue that the church does not have a maternity word, but I like to define myself as a boy born in the church because, I mean, from a young age, you know, um, I'm a member in regular and good standing of the Seventh Adventist Church, so that's my mother's church. So ever since we were young, that's how, what are we exposed to, and that's what I knew, that was church for us. You know, every Saturday you had to go to church. Well, at first I kind of didn't know, you know, understand why was I forced to go to church in a way, but um, later on in life it made sense because the church was very accommodative and that hadn't a positive impact in my life so yeah okay and let's get into your career mm -hmm. so you've got a law degree yes. tell us about it what made you or inspired you to get into the field of law um, i had a couple of conversations with a couple of people and just to explain what my interests are and trying to find a field that would best suit my interest and the person that I am. So what then happened, I then got a friend of mine who owns a law firm, okay. and then she then had me in, because what, what I did, I worked for a law firm before even studying my mm, LLB, okay. so mm -hmm. that I could get the practical exposure mm -hmm. and really decide if this is really what I want to pursue. Mm -hmm. So that on its own really gave me a platform where I was exposed to the practical side of things before going down the academia route. And I fell in love with the subject, and ever since it has been love at first sight. And you're also a member of the Golden Key International Honor Society, which is the biggest society in terms of academics. How does one become a member and what exactly is it about? Okay, um, well, first and foremost, um, being a member is quite a milestone. I mean, it's what you know, you'd want to yearn for as a young person in the academy field and all of that. So basically what happened is for you to be a member, like you said, you need to be invited to the society. And for you to receive an invite, you need to be part of the top 15% of academic achievers in your field of study. Mm -hmm. so so you need to do well in your academics and once you've proven that you've you, you were doing well or you are doing well, then you'll get an invite from the site. So basically they're saying, hey, we recognize that you're doing well and we want you to come through. So basically it's a site that's aimed at not only, you know, um, looking at the, the cutting side of things, you know, your interest in making sure that people excel and do well, but it also has a lot of um, 
um, elements that encapsulate the, the organization, such as community involvement and community mm -hmm. development. So it, it has other elements that you know it tries to to address in you know the society and also at a global stage. Okay. So basically, you being a member means you have access to um, scholarships, you have access to certain member member only privileges that obviously not anybody else who's not a member cannot enjoy, mm -hmm. such as attending international summits, such as local summits, and also getting to meet with renowned people and impacting on various communities within the space in which you find yourself in. Okay, so what exactly is a candidate attorney? All right, so um, simply put, a candidate attorney is just somebody who is training towards being an attorney. So what that entails, because in the field of law, you have two avenues you're going to go into practice. You can either decide to be an advocate and do pupillage for a year, or you could decide to go for the attorneyship and become an attorney, and then you do articles for two years. So basically, you being a candidate attorney simply means you're an attorney in waiting. You have to do what you call PLT classes, practical legal training classes, which is law school, and you also have to write your boards, uh, which is a big thing. Yeah. So so and then if you pass your boards and you've attended your PLT, then you can apply for admission to become an attorney in the Republic of, of the of SA. At your age, you've got many achievements that you've accomplished over the mm -hmm. years. Please give us a snapshot of those accomplishments. Um, well, I think what would stand out for me, um, which is very close to my heart, like I said, um, involved with the community. I, um, I did a, um, a talk show for the local community station back in Northwest, that is my freaking FM. So I had a slot from, I think it was April, going there every week just to speak about legal um, topics, you know, law related topics, you know, different topics that I think the community needed to hear about. So we touch on things such as maintenance, domestic violence, and understanding contracts and, you know, legal remedies available. So just to expose people to the practical side of law because to me studying law years was cool and mm. all of that but it made no sense because I could not use it you know whilst mm. I was still studying so you know when the producers approached me and said dude we want to have this thing I was more than you know keen on taking it on so because I believe that you know there was um, a space for it mm. so that you know it yeah. need years so, so that people could benefit and really get the practical side of law and you know be of service whilst I'm studying. Okay yeah. you were also a global warming ambassador Please. what does that entail and what does it mean what were your duties? Okay, so um, basically how that came about was that um, in 2008 we attended the International Geosphere Biosphere Program, which is an, an event, it's an international thing. So basically you get all scientists from all over the world flocking down. So this time it was held in Cape Town. So we were displaying those... Uh, um, cut game called Earth Alive cut game so basically about how to you know prevent global warming and how to deal with that so being an ambassador simply says that you know I stand out to educate people about global warming and you know how we can you know prevent going forward and the consequences adverse consequences of global warming and how we can you know move forward as a nation so basically that you know came about because of my interest in the field in bio biodiversity and everything so the South African National Biodiversity Institution um, gave us that opportunity and a platform to become ambassadors. To whom do you attribute your success to? Uh, first and foremost, I don't think I can qualify and say I'm successful. Let's just say I'm making strides towards being successful because I think I have a long way to go. You're but no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even trying to be modest, but I think I have a long way to go. And if I would say I'm, you know, the one behind my success, so you say, um, I'd be lying. I think there's a God factor involved. I mean, I strongly believe in what Matthew 6.33 says, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So to me, all these things would, would mean my education, my health, and everything that's good that you want to achieve. And I mean, that's also in line with what the book of Jeremiah says in 29 verse 11, that, you know, um, I, I know the plans I have for you, you know, to make it to prosper. Give you, well. you understand? Yeah. So coming from that context, I believe that, you know, God is you know the person responsible for everything that's happening that's positive in my life mm -hmm. yeah okay and here on identity we want to play a quick word game with you called mm -hmm. most likely to so you need to answer this as quickly as possible all right if your friend buys you a gift you don't like you're most likely to in a nice way say um thanks but <laughs> yeah but no thanks if your favorite celebrity knocks at the door and asks for water you're most likely to sure give juice <laughs> <laughs> If you become a world leader for one day, you're most likely to make a change. Mm -hmm. If you're invited for an interview on identity, you're most likely to tweet about it. Oh, you know? thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on identity. Yeah, thanks and so we much. really think that you are a success. Keep, keep it up. Thanks a lot for having me. And yeah, you've been far too kind. It's a pleasure. Tato Mashishi is definitely a young achiever with a bright future ahead of him. And we wish him well as he continues shaping the future of the next generation of lawyers and visionaries around South Africa. 
It's time for a short break. We have a special encounter as we hit the road in an effort to learn more about constitutionalism. And stay tuned for today's media review segment, which features a healthy smoothies app and an inspirational movie. See you in a moment. This is my identity. This is my identity. Sena mkela kwa khona kwi identity khona pa kumzansi for sure. Tingufiwe kwala siyabulela ngokuhlala nathi. Not so long ago, South Africa celebrated 20 years of the constitution, which remains an integral part of our democracy. The identity team heard about a commemorative walk that took place on Constitution Hill in Johannesburg and I was not about to be left behind. So I donned my walking shoes and took to the streets to find out how I can play my part in active citizenry. Let's now walk the talk. This is my identity. On the 18th of December in 1996, President Nelson Mandela signed the new post-apartheid constitution which took effect from the 4th of February in 1997. Today I'm on Constitution Hill in Johannesburg to take part in a symbolic walk that focuses on patriotism. Before we hit the streets, let's find out more about this event. Come with me. Here today is the representative of Constitution Hill, Lebukhang Marashani. Lebukhang, welcome to Identity. Thank you, thanks. I just want to understand the brief history of Constitution Hill. Give us that background. Well, it used to be a fort that was built in the 1800s and then was converted into a prison that used to hold people like Nelson Mandela, you know, your, your political prisoners during the apartheid era. It's now a site that safeguards our constitution issues of human rights, democracy. So that's who we are. We are a beacon for democracy. Okay. And speaking of democracy, what's the significance of today's event? Today, really, we can say we're commemorating the 20 years of the Constitution. This is what we are about. We are about celebrating uh, citizenry. We are about uh, celebrating democracy, but also promoting human rights. Mm. Thank you, Lebukhang. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, Mzansi, you've heard it. Let's take to the streets. Come with me. Right now, I'm with Petsi Lengobalo, one of the organizers of the event. I want to find out about the significance and importance of this event. Why specifically this event and why the name of the event? Okay, so the name of the event is taken from the preamble of the constitution. So it begins as we, the people of South Africa, ah, okay. hence we the people walk. Yeah. And it's just basically about educating people about the constitution, getting them to interact with the preamble, with the constitution and the Bill of Rights, all the contents in the constitution. It's about patriotism, it's about education. Tell us about Tandum Zanzi campaign, what is it about? Okay, so Tandum Zanzi campaign is about patriotism, it's about active citizenry, it's about also interacting with the national symbols so what we do is that we encourage that um, on the first Monday of every month um, you hoist the flag sing the national anthem and read the preamble to the Constitution so we want to educate and inculcate the knowledge yeah. of the preamble, um, the knowledge of national symbols, how you handle national symbols, what you do when you're singing the national anthem. You know, you don't just stand anyhow, you take off your hat, you don't put your hand across your chest because that is um, reserved for the president. So all these things that we need to educate about. So that is Tandum Zansi, something that we're promoting every single month, just once, first Monday of every month, that's all we ask. So basically you're a young person as well and I see many young people here as well. Why is it important for them to rally campaigns such as this? I think it's very important for young people. You know, they're the future generation. So this generation of young people are our future leaders, they are future presidents, they are future CEOs. So they need to be part of these campaigns as they are pushing the message of South Africa. They need to know about, you know, education, their rights of education. They need to know about their rights of equality. They need to know about their rights of the environment. So these are the future leaders and we want to groom a generation of leaders who are active and they know everything about their own country. I'm here with Mohamed Hatwi, the ambassador of We The People event, Konalak Ogu Identity. 
What's the importance for you, especially as a young person, to be part of an initiative at Swanangi? It's a great honor to be a part of it and, and it's just a reminder of, of to be grateful, you know, of, of where we come from and where we're going and to just make South Africa a better place. So I really just hope that the, the future generations understand the meaning of the constitution and, and why it's in place because it's, it's for the better good of everybody. Thank you so much, Michal. No problem. Thank you very much. Why is it important for especially young South Africans to be active participants of our constitution? We know we're going to have to lead this country at some point, so we have to start preparing for it, start preparing for your future, start um, becoming more invested in human rights, start becoming more interested in how people live. Section 28 of the Constitution outlines the rights of children, and it's only fitting that this event has activities for children. Let's check it out. How important is it for children to understand their Bill of Rights? very, very important. One, it protects them. Two, they need to know how people behave towards them and how they need to respect people and the earth. It's all part of the, the Bill of Rights. Um, it means so much to me. Like I'm so happy to see like all of us gathering together. But they also need to hear what we have to say. Like listen to us. We might have a point or an opinion which is opin um, important to them. Yeah, I think it's important for people to know that as children we also have a say for the country. As children we also have things to do for the country. I'm here today to learn about the things that I should do in my country as a young child. What is your hope for the future generation? We're hoping to see a young active uh, uh, citizenry that gets involved in the issues of the constitution. We see uh, the young ones, the youth of today as the future. Therefore, we believe that we need to equip them with the knowledge that's relevant. The constitution is still seen as uh, intimidating. So this is a place where we unpack the issues in a very engaging way, but also a very light way. We're saying to, 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 citizen, to citizens, this is your constitution, own it and understand it. It's been an informative and enlightening day today and I've learned a lot in terms of our constitution and our Bill of Rights. I hope you've learned the same too. But for me, on Constitution Hill, it's back to regular programming in the Identity Coffee Shop. This is my identity. What a time to be alive. The importance of patriotism and active citizenry cannot be stressed enough. I must say, I learned a lot that day, and I'm honored to have experienced the privileges of living in a democratic society. Thank you to the Constitution Hill team for putting together such an informative and interactive event. This is my identity. This is my identity. You're still watching Identity, Mzansi's favorite multi faith magazine show, right here on SABC One Mzansi for sure. I'm your host, Viewer Kwala. If you've just tuned in, here's what you missed out on. Advocate for Youth Empowerment, Tato Mashishi, got today's throwback episode off on an uplifted note. We then visited Constitution Hill in Johannesburg and learned more about patriotism and active citizenry. Now it's time to take a look at what's trending on the media front. Let's check out what's happening. Getting your daily intake of your favorite fruits and vegetables on a daily basis isn't the easiest of things to do, especially during this winter season. However, here's an app that's designed to help you create your own delicious healthy green smoothies. All you need is a blender and your ingredients. Check it out. Green Smoothie Recipes app was designed to help you increase your daily fruit and vegetable intake by offering healthy, tasty smoothie recipes complete with ingredients, nutrition facts, and health benefits. The homepage lists the suggested recipes for each day. Browse through the list and choose your favorite smoothie. 
the fruit smoothies option offers a variety of fruity recipes such as grapefruit smoothie, green tea pear smoothies, kale banana smoothies, and many more. Perhaps you want vegetable smoothies. Select vegetable smoothies to get a list of various vegetable smoothies you can prepare and the amount of people you can serve. Select the Add to Cart option and you can view your shopping list in the Shopping Cart tab. The app also gives you an option to share your recipes with your friends online. Click the Share option. Blend your way to a healthier diet with the Daily Smoothie Recipes app. I'll definitely be sipping on something refreshing and healthy as we head into spring and summer with the help of that app. Now on to our next review. It's a heartwarming movie about a young girl who travels across the country to find out about herself and her mother's past. The movie is called So Be It. Take a look. Here we are, precious. Hey, Mama. <laughs> so Be It is an adaptation of a novel by Sarah Week, which follows the life of a 12-year-old girl named Heidi who lives with her mentally challenged mother. She's taken care of by an agoraphobic next-door neighbor. Heidi was always an inquisitive child who always had interesting questions about her mother's past. Heidi uses her gift of luck to get some money so she can travel and find more information about her mother. She travels alone by bus from Nevada to New York to visit the group home in the photographs. Like I was going somewhere. But the lowest of lows if you know where to go. Come home. Things don't go as planned for Heidi as she felt like giving up. But the fighting spirit inside her didn't give up as she was reunited with her mother's family. Didn't even know for some inspiration and motivation in your life, Again. make sure you catch So Be It, starring Jacinda Barrett, Cloris Leachman, Afrey Woodard, and Talita Bateman. It's a right to know. They're not supposed to guess who they are. Jeganjalo usifike ekqibeleni yenkqubo yethu eyengcoko egqithileyo. Sicelele nokuba nigcinga ntoni na ngokusuthumela incwadi ku identity tv show at gmail.com. Ningaxhumana nathi kwi social media. Funa ni identity tv show ku Facebook, ku Twitter na ku Instagram. Today we play out with a track by Tiwe, I am woman. Join me again next week right here on SABC1 Mzansi for show. From me, Viwe Kwala and the identity team. Goodbye. 